Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. It's Jessie and today I have a much more chill video than normal. Today we're just going to do get ready with me. I want to try out the new ColourPop Hocus Pocus. Well, actually it's not quite new anymore. I think it came out about a month ago. We're nearing the end of October and I really just want to play with this collection and get it out of my everyday makeup drawers um, and see if I like it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Before we start, I finally found something else to put on my wall. I got this little bat LED light from Target, I think. Super cute. It's pink and matches my aesthetic. I'm enjoying it. I also think it's been a hot minute since I've updated you on Monsieur Monstera. And uh, as you can see, he has a third leaf now, looking very ravishing, very gorgeous. So to start, I think I'm gonna try out the new ColourPop Party Proof Primer. Um, I normally love my Fenty eye primer almost exclusively and I've used up just about every other eye primer in my collection so I thought it would be fun to switch it up and try something new. I was going to use this in a future video um, but my filming is a bit erratic because I finally got approved for my emotional support animal and it's been an adventure. I think I want to do kind of something green blue to match my sweater. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to wear for this video and then I remembered this has like the blue and greens um, and then I also have these super shock shadows and I think maybe like a green and orange look would be fun. Something different. Look at all these. I love super shocks. I think this one like this orangey gold would be fun to incorporate into the look somehow. Um, also, we're going for the messy bun look. It's a very chill day of a running errands. I'm gonna just go get in and out after this. Yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about my emotional support animal while I use my cute little cat mirror. Um, I, it took literally a month and a half to get everything situated. Normally, I don't think it's supposed to take that long because I've had emotional support animals in the past and it hasn't taken nearly as long to go through the whole process of everything. Um, but just because of where we're at, the apartment we're living in, they are super strict on who can and can't have emotional support animals. And I don't know if there's like a legal side of this because people I've talked to said that they were doing some shady stuff, but I don't know. Maybe one of y'all know. But they were basically asking, um, I had to interview first and basically kind of state what my disability was and why an emotional support animal would benefit me and like what it would do for me. And that... I thought was a little bit odd because normally I think you just have to go get a letter from like your psychiatrist or whatever and just be like hey this person needs an animal whatever and so once I did the initial interview they wanted a letter from my psychiatrist which my primary psychologist couldn't do it because for whatever reason um the the office he works at didn't want them giving out emotional support animal letters anymore so he wasn't able to do it for me and I think I might have gotten him in trouble, honestly. Oops. I have a second therapist that I see every few weeks and he was able to write one for me. So it took a couple tries. He had to actually rewrite it a few times because they didn't like the format he wrote it in. He wrote it in a, just you know, the standard letterhead letter um, format that I think would be acceptable just about anywhere else. But because of where we live and how strict they are, they made him rewrite it twice. So we ended up having to wait for three letters and that whole process took like literally a month. And then once we submitted the letters and they reviewed it, um, we had to submit it to like the psychology department because we're living on a college campus right now. I'm not in school, but my husband is. And we had to submit it to like their accessibility center or like their disability center, basically where you go if you have disabilities and need accommodations. And once they reviewed it, they sent it over to our housing office, our housing manager, because uh, there's a lot of different housing complexes here on campus. And so each one has like a different manager, I think. I think there's a general one for everything. Um, but then we had to meet with someone specifically for our housing department or our housing uh, neighborhood. I don't even know what you'd call complex. And so we had to go and basically interview with them and state like, yep, I know I'm responsible for this individual. And if he does anything, it is up to me to pay for damages or fix it or whatever, you know, standard stuff. But the fact that it took like a month and a half, I thought was just outrageous. It was so frustrating. Um, and I'm so glad it's over. Uh, but now I have my new emotional support animal. 
Uh, his name is Bruce and he's a Border Collie. He is so sweet. Literally the smartest dog I've ever met. Like I can put a bunch of different toys in front of him and tell him to grab a specific one, like grab the cow or grab the eagle and he'll go and grab that toy. Like he's just so smart. He's pretty young still and he's starting to go through like a fear period where he's scared of people. Uh, which is weird because when I first got him, he was super social, loved people and wanted to play with like everybody. And now whenever we're like out on a walk or whatever, he just kind of like sits there and just stares at them. And if they get too close, he'll kind of growl, which is good because I don't, well, it's not good. I don't want people near me. And one of the things I'm teaching him to do is to actually, um, I don't even know what you would call it. I think it's called crowding, but basically where they kind of like circle around you and make sure you have a lot of space um, because I want him to be trained eventually to be a service dog for my anxiety. Um, but we're, because he hasn't gone through training yet, we're settling for like emotional support animal right now um, until I can get him through all of the training he needs. A little bit frustrating. I know that he's like so little still, so he's still like discovering the world, but we have a meeting with a dog trainer today uh, that works a lot with border collies and service dogs especially. So I'm excited to see how that goes. So that's kept me pretty busy. It's like literally having a baby. I'm trying to train him and get him to a point where he feels comfortable by himself at home um, because he's like literally like three months old. He's super tiny still. Aside from that, I've been super busy with work. My schedule has just gotten so crazy because we're starting to head into holiday season and pretty much from September, like end of August to September, like August was probably the busiest month I've had all year and it's just starting to pick up and get busier. Uh, everyone's trying to get in it before the holidays. Um, and then of course, I'm gonna be traveling a little bit for Thanksgiving and most likely Christmas a little bit as well, just to visit family. Between clients wanting to book their appointments ahead of time to make sure they get in before the holidays and also just regular clients trying to get in, you know, new clients and everything. It's just been such a hassle. I am so exhausted. I'm very grateful for all the clients I've gotten and I've also been doing really well with retail sales recently. Um, I sell a lot of Olaplex to my clients because I do a lot of bonding clients and Olaplex has been a huge seller for me recently. Um, I pretty much am at a point where I do like order ahead so my clients or uh, whoever wants to purchase can Venmo me in advance and then tell me what they want and then they can come pick it up like the next day or like in a couple days, whatever their schedule allows. And that's been pretty good. I like being able to manage it that way so I'm not hoarding excess product on my shelves. But I think I might have to start keeping a little bit more stock on hand because I feel like I have to restock like every few days, which is good. I'm not complaining. I think that's amazing that I'm able to support myself off of my clients and retail sales, but it's a bit much. Also, if anybody else is a hairstylist, please riddle me this. So I, Salon Centric and Cosmoprof have been out of so much color. I share a color cabinet with another girl at my salon. Um, because we're all like individual booth rent, but we all have a cabinet in the back that we can use to store our color and supplies and stuff that we don't want to keep at our stations. And I share a cabinet with another girl. And thankfully, we've been able, between the two of us, been able to have all the color and product that we need for all of our clients. But recently, things have just been sold out everywhere. Like I had to go to three uh, Cosmo Profs to get bronze hair color for one of my clients this week um, and it was kind of insane and the thing is is I know it's not their fault that their shipments aren't coming in I've asked them just out of curiosity like hey do you know when your next shipment's coming in uh, you know I have some clients and I just want to make sure I can get here and stock up before you sell out again and they have all told me like oh well we were supposed to get shipments like this day or a couple weeks ago or whatever and they just haven't come in so a lot of these places like are supposed to be getting shipments and they're not, and I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if that has anything to do with like COVID still and how everything's just backed up. Um, but I heard that a lot of the ports in California are currently backed up just because there's less people working. It's like a whole situation. So I'm hoping that 
when I go out today to stock up on color for the week uh, or the next couple weeks that I'll be able to find at least the majority of stuff I need because lately it's been such a pain trying to find all the supplies I need for my clients. Everyone is just jumping on it. And here in Utah, there are a ton of hairstylists, like a ton. And so we're all just like fighting for the bare minimum products to keep our businesses going. And it's getting quite intense. Not gonna lie, it's pretty intense. Gonna go ahead and add my pen, those eyeshadows as a faux liner. I'm trying to find every excuse possible to use it because I want to roll this shade out. And I discovered if I use it every single day between now and when I'm filming my next update, I can roll it out. But I hope everyone is doing great. I know COVID is starting to pick up a lot in different areas. Here in Utah, it's starting to pick up quite a bit. I don't feel like a lot of people take it seriously here though, which is kind of frustrating. And I can't tell you the number of times I overhear, not my clients, thank goodness, but I overhear other people's clients every single day talking about how the pandemic is like fake and just a plot for the government to control us. Sorry, it's so hard to do eyeliner and talk at the same time. Kind of messed up my wing a little bit, but I don't think it's that noticeable. I think we're okay. No, I just totally, do you see that? Oh my gosh. Okay. It's a day. Gotta rip my girl, Samantha. Gonna use her highlight today. I love Samantha March. I've been watching her for actual years and she's just so sweet. But yeah, how's all of your guys' COVID experiences going? Where are you located? How's it going? I feel like here in Utah, it's been, it's been a challenge. I feel like we have a ton of cases. Um, like all the hospitals are full. A lot of my clients are nurses and they tell me all the time how full the hospitals are. Uh, yet nobody's talking about it. Nobody's caring about COVID. So... You know what? I think I'm going to do a spider. And then I have the, I got the whole Hocus Pocus collection because spooky hell. Um, but I really want to try this spider. Oh, look at that. Oh, girl, that's kind of cute, actually. I kind of like that. I know this video hasn't been the most entertaining. I'm kind of low energy right now. I'm just like, <sighs> she's good people. She's good. She survived. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm exhausted uh, from trying to handle a new puppy from work and everything. Um, but I really wanted to get a video out and I didn't really feel like filming the standard sit down review tutorial situation. So I figured maybe get ready with me. I haven't done one of these. Ooh, so we could do a nude. That's cute. I know there's a black one. Um, and then there's also, I think, a red. Okay, black. We could do black. I feel like black might be a bit much, especially because I'm going to eat a burger. Ooh, or there's a plum. Kind of like the plum, actually. I don't know if I have a lip liner that will match the plum. I have poison berry from Kylie. Maybe we'll do that. What are you guys going as for Halloween? I want to know. Uh, me and my friend, I think, are going to do Velma and Daphne. We work at a salon together, and she is orange hair right now, so she wanted to do Daphne. And if I can pull it off, I'm going to do Velma. But I would love to know everyone's costume ideas. Okay, I feel like this lip liner is a little bit lighter than the lip color, but that's fine. We're going to try it, and I think... These are the lip creams, so I'm hoping they're not super drying. Oh my gosh, this is so dark. I love it though. Oh my gosh, look how cute. Super cute, I love it. I, I love it. I don't normally do dark lips, but I actually really like dark lipstick on myself. Let me pull some of my weird witchy straight hairs down. I really need to go get my hair touched up again. It's starting to look rooty in the front. Feeling like a witch today. Mm, okay, okay. I actually really like this look. I think this one's so fun. Great, great choice on my part. Very happy. That is all for today's little get ready with me. I know it wasn't the most exciting video, but if you've stuck it through, thank you so much. I appreciate you greatly. Also, I meant to say this at the beginning, but I forgot. We hit 300 subscribers, which I know doesn't seem like a ton, but to me, that's quite a bit. That's over 100 in the course of a month. So considering I don't know even like 10 people, I'm pretty, pretty excited about 300 subscribers. So thank you if you've subscribed. And if you're not, make sure you subscribe and join the little baddie family. And I will see 
see you guys all in the next one. Bye friends.